Hey guys, today I want to do a little video talking about some of the additives that we put into soft plastic baits. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about making soft plastic stick baits, uh, Senko style lures, and some of the additives that you can add to them. A lot of guys will use salt in your in their uh, plastic formula for a Senko style bait. Um, I personally dislike plastic a lot. It doesn't um, it doesn't make a really nice bait and when you add salt to your bait it clouds the color uh, you don't get very vibrant colors they don't look very nice um, your glitter kinda starts to disappear when you use salt if you add enough salt to give it a, a good sink rate similar to a uh, say a Gary Yamamoto Senko you have to add a lot of salt um, to make it sink at the same rate and when you add that much salt, it really hurts the color of the bait. You have to add a lot more colorant uh, to get a bright bait. And then um, it takes away some of the translucency that I really like in a bait. Um, when you add glitter or flake to your bait, uh, you won't see it as much. Um, and you've got salt in the plastic. And so I've got an alternative that I use in my soft plastic stick baits uh, instead of salt. What I use is called... Uh, glass bead media. They're actually round glass beads. They're very small. Um, it looks a lot like table salt, but uh, one of the benefits to it is in addition to adding weight to the bait, the plastic will actually bond with it. It's clear, so your colors look better, and you get a stronger bait as a result. You can make a softer bait um, to get the same amount of strength, um, and a, a softer bait is going to have more action uh, the fish will hold on to it longer, and being that the, the glass is clear, it actually looks better. And so when you've got a bait that is, um, you've got a brighter color, you don't have to use as much colorant. The plastic will be somewhat translucent where you can actually see the glitter on the interior of the bait. So I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, my mix and uh, demonstrate some of the differences between uh, Senko's made with salt and Senko's made with bead media. These are some of the additives that you can use in your soft plastic baits. Um, we've got uh, the softener here. Obviously it does what it says. It softens your plastic. Um, I've got hardener here. I'll use hardener when I'm making two baits or a larger bait that I want to be more durable. I usually use it just for tubes mostly. Um, tube baits requires a harder plastic. So uh, you can take your regular plastic blend add a little bit of hardener to it and you'll have a more durable bait that won't collapse on itself. Um, I really like heat using heat stabilizer. Heat stabilizer is really good for um, light colored baits, white baits, um, any baits that are clear. Uh, when you're reheating plastic over and over and over again eventually you're going to overcook the plastic. It's going to start to turn yellow and heat stabilizer will give you a little bit extra uh, buffer you can you can reheat your plastic a little bit more it'll still eventually turn yellow it'll still eventually overcook but heat stabilizer give you a little bit more a few more reheats basically and so that's a nice thing to use the downside with heat stabilizer is that uh, it will add a little bit more of a stink to your baits and so any baits that I use that have heat stabilizer in them I always scent the baits with something that will mask the smell of the heat stabilizer. Of course we have salt, we already mentioned the salt. Um, don't use a lot of salt but I'm going to go ahead and use it for this demonstration uh, with stick baits. So I went ahead and added that to the video. Right here we have a floating additive. This is MF Manufacturing. A floating additive, um, I use that when I make the soft plastic frogs. I'll add some additive to the belly of the frog and it'll help the plastic float higher in the water column. Um, with the soft plastic frogs that I make, I like to be able to have them sit still on top of the water and regular plastic without the additive, it'll float on its own, but as soon as you add a hook, it's going to slowly sink. And so adding some floating additive to your plastic blend will allow you to float a hook. And I only use it in the belly because I like to have some color to the actual frog. And being that the floating additive is actually a white powdery substance it will affect your color of the plastic as well and so I only use it on the belly and I'll, I'll for my frogs usually I'll do a white belly 
or maybe a cream colored belly or yellow Kelly color belly uh, kind of simulating what an actual frog looks like and so that's okay to use it in the belly because they're they're light colors anyway but for the back of the frogs I'll always do a, a clear color uh, maybe a green something that's a little bit translucent something that shows some flake and so the uh, the white uh, floating additive in the plastic doesn't look good it'll still work but I like them to look good Then obviously you're going to have your color that you add to do whatever you want to. These two cups are, uh, they've got, one cup has salt in it, and the other cup has the glass bead media in it. And so I'm going to go ahead and cook those up, and that'll show you, I'm going to do a demonstration for the, uh, for stick baits. I'm trying to make something that's very similar to a Senko. Um, I'm not going to call it a Senko because it's not. It is the, essentially the same bait as a Senko, but legally you can't. It's copyrighted, so you can't use use Senko. It's a stick bait. And this is my uh, bag of glass bead media. You can get this from a variety of sources. It's very similar, looks very similar to salt. But when you stick it in the plastic, it will actually bond to the plastic better. Um, much better product than salt, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some plastic here. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing, except for except one cup was going to have salt and one cup is going to have the bead media. So I'm going to use the same amount of plastic, I'm going to use the same amount of colorant, and I'm going to use the same amount of flake in the baits. So the baits are going to be identical, they're going to be exactly the same in each cup, except one cup has salt and one cup has bead media. And so I'm going to go ahead and mix that together right now and I'll come back with that. The plastic heating up, these are a couple of the Senkos that I've already made uh, with the glass bead media. And if you hold it up to the light, I'm not sure if the video will pick this up or not, but if you hold it up to the light, you can kind of, sort of, a little bit see that it's got some translucence to it. I can't really tell if... I guess you can kind of see. A little bit translucent. You won't get that with salt. These ones I really like a lot. This is a uh, green pumpkin uh, colored bait. You really can't see it up against the light. It's a green pumpkin colored bait. You can actually see the flake on the interior of the bait, which is something you will never see with the Gary Yamamoto Senko. Um, I've actually got a pack of real, quote, real Senkos here. So I can show you these. You can't see the interior of the bait. You can only see the flake that's on the outside. And that's because Yamamoto Senkos contain salt. So salt weakens the bait, like I said. Um, the colors will never be as vibrant. You'll never see the flake on the interior of the bait. That's why I don't use salt. With this one, and the video is really not doing it justice, uh, unfortunately. But this is a color I really like a lot. Um, the bass love it. You can really see the flake on the interior of the bait if I can get it to focus. You can really see the flake all the way through it which you'll never get with a bait that contains salt. Cooked. We've got one cup that has glass bead media and one cup with salt. I'm going to go ahead and mix up the color. This cup is the cup I believe that has the salt in it. I won't be able to tell you the bait shot. I forgot to mark which cup is which. So we're going to put a little bit of flake in both of them. Try to get exactly the same amount of flake and color in each container. We got six drops of color. I like to start it with one drop of color per ounce of plastic, so we're cooking six ounces here. So this is going to be a watermelon with red flake. And make sure everything is mixed up real well.
And when you've got a salt or a glass additive in your plastic, it's going to want to settle. And so you got to keep it well stirred up before you shoot the baits. So you can get as much of it in your injector as, as possible. For this mold, it's five cavities with only one opening. So I always try to make sure to top off the mold before it completely sets up because as the plastic cools, it shrinks down into itself and it can create a void. So I always want to make sure to add a little bit extra so I don't have any baits with hollow ends. Give that just a second. It's a cold mold, so it shouldn't take long for those to set up. Mold ready to get demolded. The first batch of Senkos, stick baits. Okay, so there they. Go ahead and pull them out. And I'll just set them up here for now. And I just stuck the other cup of plastic in the microwave for 20 seconds just to let it melt back again. It was starting to thicken up a little. Again, no gloves. I should be wearing gloves. I'm not wearing gloves. I don't like gloves. But you should wear gloves. This is ready to go. Get it all stirred up real well again so that there's no salt settling to the bottom. So everything's well mixed. I just hope the camera is going to be able to catch the, the color differences. Alright, so this is salt being injected. Always add just a little bit of extra plastic when you've got multiple cavities. Because that's a lot of plastic and as it cools it'll suck that back down into itself. You'll probably actually see it retracting. You'll get a little hole in the top of your injection port. So as it's cooling I just pour a little bit extra in there just to keep it full. <clears throat> and that'll take just a few minutes. This is the salt mix. I hope it'll be able to see the differences on the camera between the two baits. This here is salt, and you can see that the baits are more cloudy. And this is the glass bead media. The plastic's more translucent. You can actually see the flake on the interior of the bait. Whereas the baits that are made with salt, you can only see the flake that's on the outside of the bait. Let's see if we can hold it up to the light and get it at all. It shows it. I don't know if you can see, uh, it kind of looks the same from the light. I don't know if it's focusing on it or not. Mm -hmm. Kind of, sort of. I mean, you can easily tell which which batch of baits was made with the salt compared to the batch of baits made with the beads.
and salt, glass. I don't know if the lighting is going to let you see it or not. Not a little bit, not much. It's not really focusing too well. I had a chance to cool off and cure a little bit. So I'm going to do a full test to check the durability of the baits. So this bait on this side here is the bait that was made with salt. I'm going to go ahead and thread it onto a jig head. I normally wouldn't fish it like this, but for the sake of testing, I want to see which bait is going to be the most durable. So I've got two jig heads here tied together. Let's thread both on to the jig. And then I'm going to pull in the tails. We'll see which one breaks first. So this, this bait over here is made with salt. This one over here is made with glass. Let's see which one comes apart first. Alright, so the salted bait obviously is the weaker of the two, and the reason for that is that plastic doesn't bond to salt, but it will bond to glass. So that's another reason why I don't use salt in my baits, is it makes a weaker bait. They don't uh, work as well. They don't last as long. So here's the damage. This phone doesn't uh, focus real well. So just pulled right through there. And this one you can kind of see it stretched it a little bit, but it didn't really it didn't rip it at all.